guys, so this week I went over to Jacksonville, Florida's Museum of Science and History, or MOSH, to interview the planetarium director. The Brian Gooding Planetarium at MOSH has the Konica Minolta Supermedia Globe 2, and it is the largest single lens planetarium in the world. When I went to MOSH, I got to interview Brett Jacobs, the planetarium's technical director. He had lost a share about his career and the planetarium itself. So let's go check it out. Hi guys, today we are here at MOSH and we are going to be talking with the planetarium director, Brett Jacobs. The first question I'd like to ask are, what, the, what are the responsibilities of being a planetarium director? Uh, well, to be a planetarium director, you're responsible for show selections, show productions, um, equipment maintenance, um, there's a lot of variety to what you really are in charge of and you have to be able to teach from K to pretty much college level. So programming can be really difficult because you can imagine trying to teach kindergartners and college kids at the same time would be very difficult to do. But that's part of the responsibilities of figuring out how to do that and finding out the right shows as well that work with those age groups. Okay. And what, are the educa what kind of education do you need for this job? Obviously astronomy helps <laughs> a lot. Um, science in general helps a lot. Um, knowing math, um, knowing how computers work and not just working on computers, knowing actually how they work is, is really important this, in, in this modern age with planetarium equipment. Um, and also the one that most people don't think about for planetarium work is knowing how to speak in public. That's actually a very tough skill. Not everyone can do that. Um, so it does take some natural ability and you could take classes. I mean, there's speech classes that people don't think about taking, but public speaking helps an awful lot in this job. Okay. What is your best experience or the best part of this job for you? Ooh, that's a really tough question. A lot of things are really fun about this job, but really my favorite is answering questions. Because um, after every school program we ever do, we have a question and answer time, and they can answer anything about astronomy. Maybe they saw something or heard something on the news and hopefully we've heard about it too, and we can answer their questions. And that's actually far far more the most fun part of the job really is. Second is laser shows. Laser shows are also just a lot of fun. In the planetarium, when it projects the images of space, where are those images coming from? Um, for our particular planetarium, we've got what's called the Super Media Globe 2. And it's this big, giant, rectangular box that's basically a video projector and has a special fisheye lens that projects the entire dome with a video image. And all the imagery is made to work with that fisheye lens. Like if we played a regular movie through it, it would look horrible. You wouldn't want to watch it. And it's pretty high definition too. It's about four times um, high definition TV quality. Okay. Can you give a brief description of some of the planetarium shows that you offer here? Well, it's, it's a pretty huge variety, and we change it about every four months. We have new shows that come and go. Um, some shows fit our exhibits, like right now we have one that's on um, dinosaurs, called Dinosaur at Dusk, and it's actually about the evolution of feathers and flight from dinosaurs to birds. Um, we do a two o'clock show every single day of the year called Skies Over Jacksonville, and that's a what you're going to see in the sky that night. Um, and even though that shows every day, it's different because the moon will be different, there'll be different planets visible, and like we have a meteor shower going on right now, so we can talk about what's going on currently in the night sky. Um, we've got one on climate change called Dynamic Earth, and we've got children's programming, we have a Sesame Street show that teaches astronomy with Sesame Street characters, Big Bird and Elmo, um, lots of programs. And then there's the laser shows, which are kind of just for fun. If you learn something during a laser show, it was an accident. They really are, but they're, they're a lot of fun. They are a lot of fun. Speaking of the technology that goes into the planetariums, you know, MOSH has had many different planetariums. They're often changing. Is there any new planetarium technology developing, and, like, can you describe it? The, the newer systems are similar to ours, but just has more capability. Usually it's a higher resolution, and that's... There's a certain point where you can only get so high a resolution where you can't tell anymore that it's real or fake. And they're, they're getting pretty close to that, um, but that's still kind of cutting edge stuff, and it, it's very impressive looking. <laughs> um, but it really is, seems to be the video projection system seem to be the future of planetariums. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you want to share with uh, me and our, my audience about 
the planetarium technology or just the shows in general? Um, <laughs> we offer lots of shows for lots of different age groups. Um, we always ask questions. If you don't know something, ask us. We, we pay attention to quite a lot. I mean, one of my jobs as the planetarium manager is reading science articles. I probably read every two hours every day on current events. So we kind of keep up what's going on. So if you ever have a question on astronomy or a resource you can definitely use and call us up or email us. Very interesting. Um, thank you so much for your time. The planetarium at Mosh is pretty cool. It has amazing technology that you can use to fly through space or even go backwards or forwards in times by millions of years. They're constantly developing new shows for your viewing pleasure. So, if you ever find yourself in Jacksonville, go check out the Brian Gooding Planetarium at Mosh. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next week. Bye!